Hello and welcome to this week's video. This week is sort of a mismatch of different things because I've got some rehousing to do, some feeding to do, unboxing to do. So this will be Bailey faced at the invertebrates and the guinea pigs. The first thing I need to do is feed a jumping spider because I'm not able to get, well, I haven't got any blue bottles so he's going to take a cricket. He's not too fussy about what he um, eats anyway so. Um, just to excuse the mess in the background, this is my bedroom, but the lighting's just bad, it's generally better in here. So, before I get started, don't forget to like my videos, subscribe down below, and pop a comment on anything that you want to chat about. So, let's get started. So, I am going to use my delivery box. This this is, let me just see if I can pop you off of here actually. So this is Jupiter. My male jumping spider, he is mature. Um, he's been a mature about four or five months, but he is due a feed. He feeds once every two weeks, once every month, depending on how active he is. I'm going to see if he will take on camera. He didn't take last time. I don't like feeding crickets, but... So, I've just got him a cricket. Sort of yay big. Let's pop you off of here and see if I can get you. I'm a cricket dude. Come on, focus for me. He's not interested right now, and I may have accidentally destroyed a lot of his weapon. So I'm just gonna leave him in there and see if he comes down to take it. The cricket should be able to get up to him if he's up high anyway, so. Um, so the next thing will actually be the Tarantula Nova. She needs an upgrade. She won't be going anything in anything spectacular. She'll be going in this for the time being, and then I'm going to get her quite a large enclosure as a display case, so she is quite active. So, this is clean. It's just had dirt in there that I've been storing. We're gonna put some tropical substrate in there for her. Gonna stick with oh, I'm gonna stick with this amount to begin with. I haven't seen any evidence of her borrowing that could change. Obviously, if it does change, then I will change her setup. And then I'm gonna break up this big, big horse park that I got from the Brighton show and offer her her borrow just in case she chooses to hide. Yeah. Whoa. I'm going to scrap the cork bark for the time being. So I'm actually going to scrap the cork, cork bark and what I'll do is when I stick the lid on I'll put a piece over the top to act as like a hidey own and then I'm going to go to the bug shop and get her a more suitable piece. And I only hit with yesterday. Um, what I'm going to do is add in this bioactive starter kit. I got this from the bug hut. No, the reptile shop. There we go. All right. Is there a good piece that I can take out? Tip some of this water in here. Just to rehydrate this soil. Right. Is there something I can take out without? Yeah. Just to add, I mean that could act as a little hide for her as well. Definitely need to get her a larger enclosure. And then for the time being I am going to be using 
um, the water dish from her old enclosure and over now how well behaved are you going to be she's also been popping this open that's why the elastic bands on there I have two elastic bands for this enclosure one catch cup now how daring am I going to, willing going to, how daring am I going to be who thinks that she isn't going to bolt Please be nice, Nova. Good girl. I say girl, but I don't actually know. Uh, some shots of her. Yeah, there, see, there she is. It's much better for her. I wonder if I can get a nice photo of her while she's in there. Come on. I can't wait for my new lens. Um, right, let's have a go at feeding Nova again. Anyone that's been here before knows what she's like. Got one cricket. Gonna take the cricket or are you too stressed from the move? Which is fine. leave the cricket in there maybe she'll take it later just fill up that water bowl bum is balding as well which tells me that she might be in for a molt stick that over there so, as much as she hasn't got a high because that's inappropriate for this enclosure she's gonna stick that piece of cork over that side and hopefully she can hide underneath that the next step is mantises I need to do my Darth Vader mantis spiny mantis and then finish off my two other spiny flat mantises my normal spiny and my false spiny. I have already cut an opening in this lid for the mesh because you need a mesh top as well as added um, circulation holes with a needle. Let's get rid of that for a second. Uh, Darth Vader Vantuses like it a little bit more humid so I am going to use the tropical soil again. Try not to get too much more on the floor. twigs which are going to be used as climbing up and down the enclosure okay. just put a couple down because he tends to what tends to happen is um, I'm pretty sure he's part of the dead leaf mantis family I say he with my track record and luck with mantises it is probably a he um, so I've seen it a few times where I will spray him with his water to obviously give him a drink and he dives down to the bottom and pretends to be dead. The first time it freaked me out because I thought I had killed him but I hadn't. He just is a bit of a drama queen. So the mesh goes over the top like this and then that goes on the top like that. It just offers them something to hang out on. My angling is really bad today. So it just offers them something to hang out on the top when they molt, obviously they molt upside down and the twigs offer them up and down. This is by any means not his permanent enclosure, I will be setting up a display enclosure in the next couple of molts but I don't want to put them into anything too big for them to lose food essentially. Now, he would look so much more, he would look so much better if I had my macro lens, say he, but again. I will get better photos when Santa brings my 
macro lens. He is due for a feed as well, looking at that abdomen. So the easiest way to tell with ma mantises is the abdomen at the back, just like jumping spiders. If it's flat, they're hungry. Oh, hello! You're actually gracing me with your presence, are you? If it's got a little bit of a like fill, it, fill out, you'll be able to see it in my spiny flowers. They're not hungry. He's telling me that he's hungry, which is fine. I'll give him some curly wings and a little while. It's not very often that he wants to hang out on my hand. That's better. So yeah, you can see that his abdomen is quite flat. Or its abdomen is quite flat. Can be a little bit of a chicken and it's extremely fast when it's panicking. And it also plays dead like a dead leaf. That's why I think it's uh, part of the dead leaf family. Or well, I'm certain it's the part of the deadly family. I don't actually know what his scientific name is. I have it written on the cup. I am not going to be saying that. I will type it in the bottom. There you have. Right, let's put him down there, buddy. Can you manage? Good job. Hoping that's okay for climbing for you. I will obviously trim off this meshing. Come on, let's get your foot out. That's it. Oh. Good. Yeah, he landed on one of the twigs. That's the important bit of the twigs, is so that if he does fall, he's got something that will catch. he can catch himself on. They're not the greatest of smooth surface climbers. Oh, it's going to have to be my hairband. It's obviously not liking the fact that... Yes, this is my hairband. Yes, I need to get more. There we go. Right, I'm going to have to recharge my battery for the spiny flower. There he is, just waking his way up to the top. I do believe he's drew a molt. Um, the size of the enclosure has to be three times the length of the mantis for them to molt successfully. This is why it was so important for him to, for them to go into a cup this big. Otherwise, I could end up having a mantis that lose limbs. So I'm just going to go and recharge the battery. So next for an upgrade is my spiny flower mantis. I'm suspecting that this one is female. She's going to go into my old orchid mantis enclosure. Again, mesh top, holes around the side for cross ventilation. Um, ventilation is very important for these guys. I'm just going to add a bit more soil onto the bottom. And then she's got this, or they've got this piece of cork bark. And I'll stick this twig in here for good measure. Put the pointy end down. Hey, again, this is not a permanent enclosure, this is just why we're still growing. Come in. Yum. So, where am I? There I am. Come on. Please stop eating me. These guys have a habit of eating my finger. Are you gonna stop it? I can feel your jaws. <laughs> stop. Stop. Oh my gosh. Stop. They've obviously found something very tasty in my finger. So yeah, this is the spiny flower that I'm suspecting to be female. Oh, I did have it then. But 
am happy either way if it's not female or it is female as long as they're happy and healthy. Go put them in a proper display enclosure soon. So let's just pop her into her new enclosure. I need to have a habit of not wanting to get back off of my finger. And then again, because of hanging upside down for molting, this piece of mesh is big enough. I need to sort out a better piece. Um, because I like to hang upside down, and I'll, I'll give them a little mist on the top. And she can actually drink through this mesh. I've seen her do it before. There she is. Right, next is my false spiny. My false spiny has already had an upgrade, but what I did was I just put the twigs in there because I didn't have soil at the time. So I'm just going to add a bit of soil on the bottom to make this twigs um, able to stay better. Please stay there. I reckon you're in pre molt. Spritz down the side, and then I will put this one back. So this is my false spiny flower mantis, as you can see by her abdomen. Their abdomen is pretty thick, which means she's okay for food. I'm pretty sure in the next couple of days it's going to molt again. I'm gonna have a look at some. Mantis den enclosures for these guys. There we go. Uh, last mantis is my other spiny towel mantis, which I am suspecting to be the male. Or oh, I've had confirmed male, sorry. And you're going to be really awkward and sit there, aren't you? Again, they do like coming out or wonders on my fingers. I don't get them all out together because they can be cannibalistic. I don't fancy them eating each other. But, look, dude, just a bit of soil on the bottom. Oh, are you coming out? I'd rather you didn't right now. There we go. Thank you. Right, I actually got some orange um, isopods, powdered orange isopods from the bug hut and at least one of them has the blue gene. So obviously I've separated them out, they should still be in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add some more substrate into this. Ah, we see one. Go. Piece of cork bark to bury in. So yeah, here's the little guy. Uh, they were meant to be powdered orange. 
but a couple of had a blue cup crop, cropping up. So to stop them from losing both colours, I've started to separate out any of the powdered blues that I get. Pop you back. So I quite like both colours. Give his. There we go. And now he's actually got dirt to live in. That soil mixture's got leaf litter in it, so I'm alright for a minute. I've got two spiders now to rehouse. I've got the Philippus regius and then the Philippus bold. Yeah, that's the bold jumping. It's the regal jumping. Um, again, this is the enclosure. I just need to put some dirt on the bottom and some springtails in there to help clean up any flies. Please stay in there. Doesn't have to be bigger amounts of dirt, it's just something to help with the humidity for molting. Give her a little spray. This is my little one, Pluto. Not very good at these camera angles. So, this is Pluto. So, yeah, she's got some soil, plant, and then she's up in her little nest up the top here. Um, she doesn't come out very much, she's not like the males that I have that wander. This is my new baby. He is a bold jumping spider or Philippus bold. Again, he's in like this because I thought he was in pre-molt. I didn't want to disturb him if he was in pre-molt, but he's had no molt or not show me a molt. And he's eaten, so I'm just going to take this tissue out. I'm going to spot a dirt. Some sticks to climb on. And again, this is not a permanent enclosure because they're quite active. And he is male, and I find the males are more active. So this will just do well. He's too small to go into one of my larger enclosures. That's going to be really awkward because of the. There we go. And that gives him somewhere to climb a rest on while I. Uh, Wait for him to do some growing. Last but not least is my orange springtails. Um, I picked these up from the Brighton show. I just want to uh, give them some a bigger place, better soil, something like that. So I'm just going to put them in Nova's old, old enclosure. This is what it looks like currently. I've been feeding them yeast. And the, I've got plenty of babies, but I don't know whether they're all orange. Some of them are white. There's mixed in there. So here they are. Hoping you can see them. Yeah, kind of. All the orange things moving around. I'm hoping that I've got a sustainable culture. There seems to be more than what I did have from the expo. But there's some white ones running around in there. So I'm just going to keep an eye on that I'm actually getting baby orange ones. If not, it's fine. I'll just separate the white ones out from the orange ones. So I don't lose one or the other. So I am actually going to leave that video here. I'll do the guinea pigs ones separately. I would like to thank you guys for watching and coming along with this rehousing of random things and I'll see you guys next week. Bye!